All right. Um, I'm waiting for parts on my counter, so I don't can't put my counter together quite yet. But I was interested in uh, maybe some measurement of some things. Maybe when I get my counter together, I can measure these again. But um, I'm, I want to kind of talk about um, the standard inside of the frequency counter. Now, inside of the Rachel Dana, there's a really, really nice uh, big, uh, big oven like this one. Uh, this came out of a out of a military piece of equipment. Um, but uh, it's a 10 megahertz uh, fancy oven, and it's oven controlled, so it's very, very stable, and it has a coarse and fine adjustments and everything. So this one you can tune right in, and these are great uh, stability and stuff. Now, these take up a lot of room. <laughs> They're kind of big. Um, they have miniaturized them a bit, so these are all over eBay. These are, um, uh, let's see, what's the part number? It's an OSC5A2B02. Um, and you can find these all over eBay, and these are used. These have been pulled out of something, so I don't know what kind of... I think they're probably pulled out of some kind of cellular thing or some kind of um, GPS system or something, but these are really, really nice little little ovens. So these are these are tiny ovens, right? Big oven, tiny oven, but these are ovens. So these these consume a lot of power. You don't want to put them, these in battery-powered applications because they eat a lot of power. They get hot. Um, and so I'm kind of interested in these things. Now, I, you can pick these up pretty cheap on eBay. You can pick them up for five bucks. Uh, so that's a screaming deal if they work good. So I thought what I'd do is uh, uh, kind of do a shootout here. Uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, three different oscillators, the, the, the oven, a temperature controlled, and another temperature controlled, and of, of different, different grades. And uh, you can find a lot of these on eBay too. These are these are Isotemp 0910. They're also like a, a TC2900 or something like that. I don't remember, quite remember the part number, but they're they're kind of all the same. But these are kind of big fat uh, 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 crystal oscillators. And this one's kind of thin. Now this one requires an external component to tweak it in, as does this one. This requires an external tweak. I'll show you the schematic. And then this one has a tweak right on. Uh, the part itself, so it's all, all self-inclusive, which is which is kind of nice if that works. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the schematics for these things. Uh, so this is what I came up with. So this is the big oscillator, the the oven. This is the bottom of, of it. There's there's a. a three pins on one side and two pins on the other side. No connect, five volts in ground. Uh, this should be, I should draw this in. This is uh, ground. All right. And then uh, the output pin goes to a 50 ohm load and then out. Um, and then there's an adjustment pin. And that adjustment pin uh, sets the fine accuracy of the 10 megahertz. So I thought what I'd do is I'd use a nice reference. I, I'm going to use a two and a half volt uh, reference, a TL431, and then put a potentiometer on that. It, th this is measuring about 1.75 volts. Is where this one is happy, and so this is a nice a nice way to do that. So it should be pretty it should be pretty stable. Now, uh, the other kind, uh, like the uh, the isotemp one that I have over there, it's just a regular can, five volts. 5 volts out, so pin 14, pin 14 is 7, right? This is the power and ground. Uh, this is top view, this is this is the bottom view. Um, and then in order to tweak it, again, have a resistive divider. So this is a typical application for that. And then the other one just needs power and ground. So uh, quite, quite easy. So uh, let's go ahead and look at those on the, uh, on the oscilloscope here. Uh, let me first look at the... Let me first look at the oven, the big, the big fat one. Oops. And uh, you can see that uh, I've dialed it in, and it's very, very, very stable. So this one's going to stay around for a very long time. So I'm very, very pleased with this one. Um, the blue trace is the rubidium standard, and the yellow trace is the oscillator. So they are definitely not drifting with one another. They are just rock solid. So that that's looking really, really good. So let's look at the next one. Let, let's look at the isotemp. And uh, it does seem to be drifting a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get my tweaker out. 
and uh, I am going to try to get this all on the same camera shot. All right. So I am going to adjust the uh, adjust the potentiometer here. The uh, adjustment on the uh, the fat one it was really really easy. It's, it takes a lot of turns to move it. So it's a very, very fine adjust, which is nice. All right, let's get it in there. There we go. Okay, so this one is also fairly fine, not as good as the big fat one, but it's pretty easy to set it for, uh, for zero phase, okay? Now it's still starting to drift off a bit, so let's try that again. Maybe there. That's about as good as you get. It's going to drift off with time, so that's about as good as you get. So remember this one. Remember the first one. Remember this one. And now let's take a look at the uh, one that has the self-adjust. And you can see that it's kind of uh, moving in, not in, uh, evenly. It's moving in a little bit spurts. And that's kind of like the feedback loop for the temperature control. Is it, uh, It's not dampened right or something. I don't know. So I'm going to try to adjust one. Now this one is really, really hard to adjust. It's just super finicky. Super, super finicky. So, yeah, I just don't like this one. I don't like this one at all. All right, there we go, right? So you saw it at least for a second there. It was like perfectly good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these on for a day, okay? And we will come back tomorrow and we'll measure all of them and uh, see how they did. All right, it's been 24 hours, and uh, we're back in the garage. We're going to measure these three again, see how they're doing. Um, we have the, um, the oven, the ISO uh, thermally controlled, and then a kind of a cheapy thermally controlled. So we'll see how they do here. We're looking at the oven now. So the oven compared with the rubidium, it is drifting. So let's get out the watch here. Let's measure the, uh, the drift over one cycle. See how it's doing here. Uh, where's a good point to measure? I'll measure right. I'll measure right here. And we will wait for it to come over. All right, so it's about 12 seconds, 12, 13 seconds. Let's say 13 seconds. 13 seconds, okay. And uh, let's go to the, uh, the middle one here. Let's see how he does. And he's doing very nicely. He's drifting as well. Let's measure him. Let's see, he'll come along here. All right, he's about eight seconds, uh, eight second drift per period. And then uh, we will go to the little guy here. Let's take a look at him. And he's just zipping along, so <laughs> I don't know, half a second, something like that, pretty quick. Anyway, so that gives you a stand, uh, an idea here. I was expecting a little bit more out of this one. I, I didn't expect it to be drifting this badly uh, only after 24 hours. Um, I mean, for the garage, it's fine, right? I just expected it to be a little bit better than that. The, uh, the big ones that I showed earlier, uh, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be good for months and months. They'll stay, they'll stay pretty, pretty good. Um, I've had a lot of instruments here in the garage that had old ovens in them, my uh, radio test set and spectrum analyzer and stuff. And, you know, years later, <laughs> years, years later, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty well spot on. So yeah, pretty good. Anyway, yeah, one of these would be fine for the garage. One of the, one of these would be just fine. It'll keep you going. Anyway, there you go. Just thought it'd be interesting.